Hey guys, welcome to the Frack and Friends show. This is episode 35, 36, or 37, depending on when we release this. Uh, don't know. Actually, this is probably going to be the first thing we release, but so let's just say 36. We have my co host, <laughs> Mr. Charlton, Ms. Denise. Those who don't know Charlton, you should have watched the original show because he's been part of it for like two, three years now. Um, yep. But uh, welcome back, Charlton. <laughs> this is his first time on the Frack and Friends show. Um, we'll be going to a convention this weekend, doing some interviews, uh, doing a panel, uh, and uh, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy, man. But uh, welcome to the show, Charlton. <laughs> Glad to be here, man. It's, uh, it's been a little minute, hot minute, a little while. It has, man. And, and, yeah. and, and even Denise, it's been like a week. Like, what's up? <laughs> I know. I've been missing you greatly, my friend. That's okay. I feel better. I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, oh, guys, we have an amazing person. You know, we're all about nostalgia. We're all about the 90s and 2000s. And uh, who else can we bring on but one of our favorite? He's not the author, author of, you know, the books. But he is a sentimental, important piece, which is the covers of this series. Uh, we have Mr. Tim Jacobus, who is all about what? goosebumps. Goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> I don't want to hit the wrong button. I have a clap button, but it's <laughs> every time I hit it, it's something a kid crying or someone laughing. So I'm not even going to try to hit the right button today. <laughs> we did it manually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Mr. Tim. Um, you are an important piece of history, uh, whether you see that, you know, uh, or not, because some people are like, eh, you know, I just did this, you know, it was nothing. It was my job or, you know, it's not as big as we think. But growing up, uh, you know, for, for us pretty much was, uh, you know, our entire elementary life uh, to, to now. Uh, began with goosebumps. You know, that was the first things probably I'm sure, you know, most of us had started reading. Um, and um, yeah, so like, we're super, super excited about having you here, man. Um, you know, uh, first off, I guess we can go around kind of and just talk about like, our start with goosebumps, everybody. Uh, so Charlton, uh, you kind of <laughs> introduce yourself. <laughs> Hey guys, well, well, everybody knows me except for Tim, but I'm Charlton. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I just, I remember <laughs> first time being around Goosebumps, you know, my neighbor, he had the VHS tapes and I used to make him put them away because I was so scared. I was, uh, I was scared of the, uh, the Haunted Mask 2 tape and I have that poster mm -hmm. in my game room right now. Caleb's seen it, nope. but, um. Yeah, I used to make him put those tapes away and, you know, all of a sudden I would be looking for books and books a million and uh, I'd see a big rack of Goosebumps books and I would get so scared and then I'd be like, huh, and I walked around again and I walked around one more time like, huh, and I started reading Goosebumps books. I'm like, man, I really like this horror stuff. I like, be, like to be scared, you know, it's, it's kind of weird. I don't know why, but, and then. That was my introduction to horror, you know, just I couldn't stop watching horror. Ask, ask this guy, you know. Yeah, it's true. He's, <laughs> he's seen some uh, messed up uh, movies in every way and tells me to watch them and I watch them and I'm like, dude, no, you know, <laughs> stuff that makes your stomach turn or, you know, when watching. And, oh, yeah. Uh, but um, but uh, Denise, what's what's your introduction to uh, Mr. Tim's work? I think she's frozen, guys. She froze. First of all, you know, of course, the introduction uh, is all about goosebumps, but that, that isn't really all that you've done in your life. So let's go ahead and get like a background uh, of you. Like, tell us about, you know, kind of, you know, growing up, what was some of the things that you, you know, like doing the music, the movies, because that's what, of course, we're all about. 
Well, uh, I'm a, I'm a New Jersey guy. I was born and bred here. I've been here forever. I've never left. Uh, I've lived within a kind of a 25 mile radius of the same area. Um, I'm a, I'm, I'm considerably older than you guys. So, uh, really? I'm, I'm a seventies guy, <laughs> not a nineties guy. And, Ooh. uh, so, uh, a lot of, you know, I was not, you know, the, the, the running joke is I was not a horror guy. Uh, if I was a, you know, 10 year old back in the nineties, when goosebumps came out, I probably wouldn't have read it cause I would have been too scared of it. So the fact that I ended up being the guy doing the covers, there's a lot of irony there. Um, wow. I think though, that because, uh, I wasn't, uh, you know, deep into the horror, we were all kind of discovering horror at the same time. Even though I was older, we were all mm. kind of going into it uh, innocently. So I didn't hit it, hit you all too hard with the images, <laughs> and RL didn't hit you all too hard with the stories as well. So sure. maybe my lack of uh, having too much edge in, in the horror world actually <laughs> played out pretty well for us. Wow. Wow, nice. that is incredible, wow. man! Seriously, <laughs> wow. So, so how old were you when you uh, when you actually started uh, doing the 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 art and everything? Well, uh, used to draw. You know, or, yeah, my dad could draw, and uh, we used to use drawing uh, just as a way of communicating. Uh, my dad would be telling a story, or he would say something like, "Oh, I'm thinking about uh, building a deck on the back of the house." And it's mm. almost like this, and he would flip over a napkin and take out a pencil and do a quick sketch. And so the idea that uh, drawing and communicating went hand in hand, I picked up on that uh, right away. I had two sisters. They didn't really do it, so it was kind of my dad and my thing. Um, also, again, we're going back – you know, when I was a kid, kid, you know, we're, we're, we're not even into the 70s. We're in the 60s. Wow. And the idea of art as a job, that was that was just way too far out there um, as a as a as a concept. So art was was just something we did for fun. Uh, my best friend who lived next door, he liked to draw as well. Uh, we continued to draw our whole life together. We went to art school, uh, high school, and then went on to art school together. He became a big wheel in uh, the advertising business. He made tons and tons of commercials. You've seen tons of his work. Wow. And I went the other way, yes. and I went towards the illustration side of things. And uh, so, <laughs> yeah, all that innocent nonsense of just sitting on the floor, keeping ourselves entertained, ended up being something that worked out for both of us. Wow, man. I'd say two two different worlds, two different fields. Oh, yeah. You know? Completely. Yeah. 100%. And um, when it, 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 it's funny when you uh, if you met us both at a bar and we were hanging out and talking, you would see exactly how our personalities went the way they went and why he went in one direction and I went in the other. Wow. That's cool. Interesting. That's cool. Go ahead, Charlton. Um, so yeah, just, I mean, my, I think my first question was, uh, you know, kind of how'd you just get into being the front runner of goosebumps? Like, Hey, like I want this guy, you know, to be my illustrator. Like did, did RL kind of, you know, did y'all meet up? I know y'all kind of close, but. So yeah, it's a, it's, it's funny. They don't. So the book business runs a little weird. Mm. Um, Illustrators work with art directors at book companies. Authors work with editors at book companies. And they keep the illustrators and the authors way far apart from one another. Uh, I don't know what the reasoning is to it, but, uh, you know, I've done hundreds and hundreds of books over the years. And RL is probably one of five authors that I met. Uh, in all the time, uh, it's just something that generally doesn't happen. You usually meet the authors 
kind of after the fact or at a okay. you know like an alternative event it's nothing that they get you together as part of your project um uh, rl and i worked together for pretty close to two years before we actually shook each other's hand so wow. Um, wow. yeah it's a it's a it's an odd setup um <laughs> Since then, uh, you know, we've become good friends and uh, and because it's so easy to communicate with each other now through text and everything else, we're constantly sending each other texts. And uh, so it, <laughs> nice. it's, it's a lot easier now. Um, nice. But your original question was, how did I actually get picked for it? Um, I had been working with Scholastic for a couple of years. I had done some other uh, young adult books. Uh, I, I had kind of proven myself to be responsible. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, right. give me a job, I'll get it done on time. My work is consistent. You know, it always looked the way it was supposed to look. I, you know, I didn't make a lot of excuses. And so right. when Goosebumps came along, I had just finished something up and they were, you know, it was very similar to if uh, if we were playing basketball and, yeah. you know, the game had started and the coach was like, ah, I need somebody else to get in there, just turn to the bench. And I got pulled in off the bench <laughs> there at the right place at the right time. So um, I wasn't picked uh, outright for Goosebumps because I didn't have any horror experience. Yeah. So they let me do book number one which was called Welcome to Dead House. And another illustrator who had a, a huge horror background did book number two, which is Stay Out of the Basement. And they said, we'll just do these two <laughs> and uh, we'll let you, you know, let's see what they look like when they're done. Yeah. And whichever way we decide to go, you'll do the rest of the books. Wow. Now, at that right. point, the rest of the books was only going to be two more books. There was originally only going to be four. And wow. so it wasn't like this was a big contest or, you know, we were, you know, clawing our way to the top of the pile or, you know, <laughs> sabotaging one another. So, uh, right. uh, so when we turned them in, the, the main concern of the publisher at the time was that Goosebumps was going to be too scary. Uh, no one had done a wow. yeah. No one had done a kid series for that age group yet. So, you know, they they really had very low expectations for it. Low enough to where me and the other uh, illustrator's name was Jim Thiessen, They they offered us less money than normal to do the covers because and and I the, the exact quote was, "Listen, Tim, if you could help us out on this." We don't have a full budget for these <laughs> covers, but when this is over, we promise we'll put you on something good. So, wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Man. So, you know, they didn't know, I didn't know, and uh, so uh, yeah, I, it was kind of luck of the draw. Jumped on it, didn't think it was going to be much. Read the first uh, manuscript. So RL was writing the books at the same time I was doing the covers. So wow. Welcome to Dead House was the most complete manuscript that I ever got the whole time we were in the series. And once I read it, I was like, oh, yeah, this is this is going to be fun. And I don't mm. care if they're not paying me full price or not. This is, you know, wow. this could be a good time. So, uh, yeah, went into it just kind of, got, you know, oh, well, let's give this a shot. Mm hmm. Luckily, right. I got picked to be the guy to move it forward. And one of the reasons I did get picked was uh, Jim stuff was, like I said, spot on, true sure. horror. And my stuff was a little lighter, a little more maybe cartoonish is not the perfect word, but you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. And I also used those saturated colors. So between those two elements, they were like, yeah, this this is taking the edge off. This is less scary, so let's let Tim do the the other couple of books. So that was <laughs> my, uh, you know, that was my beginnings. And uh, wow. nice. uh, Goosebumps didn't get off to much of a start. It actually, uh, come on, yeah, it actually 
kind of crawled out of the out of the starting blocks um, around book seven, book eight. They were actually they're talking about killing the series. And, wow. Yeah, and then for whatever reason, somewhere <laughs> around book nine, book ten. You guys all started word of mouth and talking to one another, yep. and the right. thing took off, and it really <clears throat> went from "oh, we're going to cancel this thing" to "holy crap, this is the, <laughs> this is the biggest thing we've ever seen." So wow. uh, experts <laughs> didn't know it was going to do well. Uh, I didn't certainly know it was going to do anything. And uh, in recent years, talking with uh, R.L. Stein. He was like, I, I didn't want to do it. I didn't think it was going anywhere either. So everybody Man. was caught uh, by surprise by the success. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I think what you, you know, what you said earlier about book nine, book ten. I think that's when I started reading. You know, it, it had to be because I remember, you know, you know, back then I didn't read things in order. I was a very young kid, uh, <laughs> but I, but I do remember, like, I remember just reading. Uh, around that time. And, um, but, you know, in, in your opinion, why do you think Goosebumps is what it is, you know, just jumping forward here, but why do you think Goosebumps is what it is today? Like, why do you think it worked? Uh, you know, that's the, you know, that's the, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, 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 I have no more insight into that <laughs> than you pull anybody else off the street. Sure. Um, Listen, RL's uh, writing is is mm. perfect for the genre. The way he structured all those stories was absolutely perfect for the new reader. You know, the books are only 120 pages long, but there's a lot of chapters in them. Yeah. And every chapter mm. rolls a few pages, and then something suspenseful happens at the end of every chapter that makes you want to go, all right, I'm going to read one more chapter. Exactly. And you roll it, yep. and roll it, and it would kind of push you through the book. And at the end of every single book, there was a twist, surprise ending, or yes. something. So, right. you know, yes, there's a formula to it, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, go back and read one now. It's funny because I went back and read one recently, and there's they're still really good that, you know, yeah. very oh, yeah. well put together. <laughs> and um, so, I mean, that, that was a key why it, it became the, 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 the big phenomena. It's a bunch of things. All right. Here's another reason mm -hmm. that it had to do with it was they had the scholastic book fair. Yeah. And oh, yeah. That in itself was Ooh. a really novel idea where Scholastic made, you know, made all the deals with the schools where we're going to bring this thing in. You guys, every school did it kind of the same way where you would yeah. get time off from class. You knew it was Scholastic Book Fair Day. You'd hit up your parents for a couple of bucks. They bring it in <laughs> and you could, you know, pick yourself up some books, a calendar or this or that. And they made Pencils. it a mini yeah, a mini event <laughs> in school that, you know, wasn't happening. And, you know, and what parent's going to say, no, kid, you can't have some money for books. I don't want you reading, you know. So, okay. uh, that's, a, that's a cold parent if that's the if Yes, that's the I word. agree. <laughs> so the book fair became an event. Then there wasn't a lot of. The, okay, so Scholastic gets this thing rolling. They're like, all right, we got this thing where we're getting the kids' attention and we're making sales, you know, and and getting kids' attention in the school. And RL and I just happened to have a very cool-looking product. And yeah. that got oh, yeah. then slid right in there. And although there was a lot of other good books at the time, there was nothing that looked like goosebumps it literally was, right. it was totally yeah. unique you know you're getting monsters in, in a very uh, the designers worked real well with the art that i gave them wow. every cover looked completely different you know they we did different colors on them and when they they started to line up it was you know and rl was putting them out he one was month, right. you know so it wow. was just enough to make yep. you guys go, you know, if 
we only put them out every other month, we would have never got that momentum. But because yeah. it was coming out every month, you guys were just going, yeah, uh, oh, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. And then you started getting into the habit of got to get through this one before the next one comes out. Yep. So right. uh, <laughs> there was, that, you know, and we were kind of first at that, you know, ever since then, everybody's uh, done it. And uh, there's been, you know, some other, there's been really other cool series, but yeah, we were, you know, kind of in the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, that's part of the magic and the secret sauce is just <laughs> like, if we tried to do it again, it could be me and it could be RL and we could try to do it again today. Wouldn't have the same. It wouldn't have the same magic. It just sure, not that we're any different. And he, not that he doesn't write as well or I don't draw as well. Yeah. It's just that magic of being, you know, at the time and, and, and culture. Uh, yeah. And, <laughs> and, 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 that, and again, social media, wasn't yeah. a thing, so your entertainment was still in a in a in a paperback book. You, yep. you, there wasn't, you know, <laughs> the video games weren't mind blowing like they are now. Oh yeah, they definitely. Were, were, <laughs> distractions were were way 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 less. You know, there was only three channels on the TV and uh, wow. all of it. So um, yeah, it was uh, we we were in a very good position at the time. Wow, man. Can, can, can you talk about, you know, the, the idea of, or the concept of how you, how the book covers became what they are? Was there a meeting with, you know, people saying, all right, we need something that has a green hand, looks weird. Like, what was the idea of the process of you creating these covers, man? Because every, like you just said, you use the best word, every single cover was unique, you know, enticing. Like if you would see it from across the way, you had to go get it. You had to go get it. And then you were hooked. You were hooked. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because uh, I've, I've often uh, compared it to, you know, we were fishing. I was the lure. If I could get to pick you guys up, yes. RL could reel you in. And uh, then, we, then we had you. So um, the, the process. So. In most situations in the book business, there's it, it, the books move a lot slower. So because yeah. we were putting out one a month, the whole process was sped up, which for uh, an illustrator, that's a good thing. Because when the process goes slow, then more people can put their two cents worth in. And there's always more time to change stuff and mm. redo things. And because we were on this tight turnaround, there wasn't time for that. And when Goosebumps started, like I said, nobody had any the grandiose expectations that it was going to do anything fantastic. So yeah. people were paying attention to other things and they kind of let me do what I wanted. So <laughs> me and it was just one art director that I worked with and, you know, we would talk and go, all right, uh, RL was writing the book at the same time we were doing the cover. So it wasn't like we had a whole book to read. He would just give us the title and maybe a paragraph, maybe just two sentences. Wow. And, yeah. And they go, OK, that's that's what we're doing this time. All right. So we would have a discussion. And yeah. And it would be like that. It's like, and they, you know, she'd go, well, you know, what do you think? You know, you want to big monster hand. All right. Yeah, we could do one of those. And then I'd go, well, what about if the, you know, we take a different view of it and we come at it from this side. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we would, uh, I would then go and sit down and I would do sketches and I would always do one of exactly what her and I talked about. Yeah. And I would do one that was completely out of left field that we didn't even have a remote discussion about. And then I would come up with something that either was hinted at or something. So we, you know, there was a range of things. And I tried to do three for every one of the uh, books. I would wow. turn them in and they would have a meeting and decide, yeah, we like number one, let's do number two. Or 
I mean, the, the most outrageous thing that they would do is go, gee, we like the background in number three. Can you put the monster from number two in and use the background from number three? Sure. Great. Sounds good. And then they wow. go, all right, just go do it. And uh, back then there was no digital art yet. So all the goosebumps are traditional uh, paintings. They're 20 inches by 20 inches. They're acrylic wow. paint. Um, and it's a combination of brush and airbrush. Airbrush, you know, you've all seen airbrush done either, you know, on motorcycle tanks or, yeah. uh, you know, maybe you saw people painting on T-shirts or uh, it's basically controlled spray painting. And when you look at the Goosebumps covers, they have a very smooth, polished look to them. And that's how I got it was using the airbrush that kind of sprayed away all the brush strokes. So it almost it almost had a digital feel to it before yeah. digital even existed. And uh, so I would just go and do my thing. I would do the painting, wrap it up, send it out Federal Express and they would get it. And because we were having, you know, like I said, first, nobody cared that much. So, you know, <laughs> okay, great. You're done with that one. Here's the next one. Let's get going. And um, when, so, you know, I had this kind of free range that I never had before. And I haven't had it since where I just wow. got to do what I wanted to do. And um, then to their credit, when Goosebumps took off and became, you know, became a thing, Usually what happens when something gets uh, popular or, you know, becomes, you know, financially viable, more mm -hmm. people glom on and people want to get their fingers in there and they want to do stuff to it. And mm -hmm. whoever was in charge, to their credit, just said, don't anybody touch this. It's wow. working. Just keep doing exactly what we're doing and don't mess with it. And that's what happened for the next 10 plus years. Like nobody messed with me and we just kept putting them out. And um, it was, uh, you know, it was a, a very unique situation. Wow. <laughs> nice. Yeah, actually, um, I, I, I saw this online earlier today. Um, you put Converse red and white Converse sneakers into your covers because your mom hated them? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is that is that is true. Uh, so, in the, wow. In, so uh, I played sports. It, so I went to high school in the 70s. I graduated in 1977. I played football, basketball, and baseball. Uh, when we played basketball, we were all still wearing Chuck Taylor high top all star <laughs> right. con sneakers. They were, you know, we all couldn't figure out why our feet hurt so much when we played balls because those are the worst sneakers <laughs> for doing sports. They're great for hacking around, but they're terrible for sports. And uh, but I love my cons, always had them. And uh, you know, uh, we weren't a, a very wealthy family. Uh, but we weren't poor either. I'm not playing that up. But, you know, you only got a couple of pair of sneakers a year. Sure. And you just right. wore them to death to the point where my sneakers really smelled. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like my Sperry's. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, you know, there became a time where, you know, my mom would say, you know, at some point she, you know, was like, listen, you know, someday you're going to have to get a real job. You're going to have to wear real shoes and we're going to get rid of these stinking sneakers. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Ma, sure ma. Yeah. That's what <laughs> As the goosebumps came along and you, I did need to show uh, either a character's feet or, you know, Curly, the, the mascot, you yeah. know, he had the sneakers on as well. <laughs> they were just my sneakers. So it was kind of like a way of just going, oh, I'm going to put a little myself in there. I like the sneakers. I hope everybody else does. And it was just a, like a, a, a toss off. Yeah. yeah. Then, uh, of course, as the books came out, 
being a good kid, I would always either the book publishers would give me books or I would go to the bookstore and get them if I didn't get a, a copy that month. And I would give them to my mom. So she had a nice full collection of the Aww. Goosebumps covers. And, you know, moms are moms. So you'd be like, oh, that's so great. You know, you got another book to cover. Oh, it's very nice. But if there were <laughs> the Converse sneakers on it, she'd roll her eyes and then she'd go, oh, and there's those stinking sneakers. <laughs> yeah, I, it was torture for my mom. And that's why I kept on doing it. And, uh, <laughs> That's great. I didn't know that. That was actually that's actually really hilarious, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I figured that out. What well, I saw that online today, I was like, "Huh, interesting." Because I, I I would always see Curly, and everybody forgets that he's the mascot. They're like, "It's Slappy, it's Slappy." I'm like, no, it was yeah, Slappy's Curly. become the guy. But yeah, we, <laughs> we made a conscious effort to 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 develop Curly, and he was on. For the longest time, he was the the character that was on the most Goosebumps covers because he wow. was on the special editions and everything else. But right. there was never uh, a full story about Curly and who he was, and RL right. never fleshed him out and did any stories with him. So, right. Wow. Yeah. I guess you got to watch the. Um... They had the Disney MGM Studios stage play. That's the only background I guess you right, did of Curly. Right, exactly. <laughs> there, there was a whole bunch of you know. There's a lot of urban myths and legends, and sure. uh, you know, I think RL's hinted at a number of things, but nothing ever was was flushed out. Right, right. Nice. Well, um, what are your favorite covers? I, I have some here with me right now. I would say number three for me. Night of Living Dummy, yes. number two, The Haunted Mask, the there original you know. one. And while most people wouldn't say this one is better than those previous two, I would say for me, number one, The Werewolf of Fever Swamp. Uh, Werewolf of Fever Swamp. Yeah. All right. Well, okay, you got some heavy hitters there. Uh, oh, yeah. I, uh, I sell uh, Goosebumps prints through my website, and uh, so I know what our – you know, statistically, I can tell you what are the fan favorites. Okay. And those first two that you pulled out are, you know, definitely very, very high on the list, but they are not. They are both number two and number three. The, wow. the top mm. seller out of all of them is A Day in Horrorland. Okay. Well, there you go. There you Whoa, go. <laughs> come on. That's nice. shocking. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I, and I was caught, you know, I was surprised by that as well. Um, but yeah. uh, those three hands down, uh, although Werewolf of Fever Swamp does, uh, you know, does very well. Uh, Say Cheese and Die. That's, yes. a, right. you know, that's a, that's a big one. Um, uh, Monster Blood 2. That one with the hamster. Oh, yeah. that oh, that was my favorite as a kid. Cuddles. Right, that one, Absolutely. That one. Cuddles. Oh, my goodness, man. I have so, a story about that once we get to it, but I can tell that later. Sure. <laughs> so, no yeah, ahead, I'm, my favorite, though, it, it, you know, if you – it changes all the time. There's, mm -hmm. you know, if, uh, you know – you guys are cool enough and you invite me back in a year from now and ask me the question. I'm going to tell you a different we cover. Are cool. uh, but, uh, um, uh, but one of the ones that always stands out to me, and th there's a couple that stand out because when I read what the story was about, I was like, oh, man, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. So mm. um, Egg Monsters from Mars – was one of those because I was like, well, okay. it's an egg. And I'm going, well, there's nothing scary about an egg. I don't know <laughs> what I'm going to do with this. And uh, so it didn't just, a lot of them just, the idea is so rich. You just go, oh, yeah, I know what where this one's going. And that was one <laughs> where I, it, I had to go around the bend a little before it, it started to gel. Wow, right. man. I did not read that one, but I heard it was about Easter. So it's uh, the second one on my list that I need to read. Yeah, I did, still did not read Horrorland. So I love that episode. That one, that yeah. one, that, on. that, that's why I, I think that one's popular because the cover worked pretty well, but the story is is very cool. So it's right. I, I, I noticed that as the 
a common denominator, common denominator <laughs> to why uh, you know the they resonate all these years later. It's it's the combination of the two. Nice. Wow, nice. man. But, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's incredible. Okay, sorry, buddy. <laughs> no, uh, that good. that's truly incredible, man. I yeah, mean, I, I, I think <laughs> this is this is little Sophie. She she wants to be on the show all the time, so we we, we allow her to be a guest co-host. Okay, <laughs> um, but uh, she um, she's really really sweet. Uh, but yeah, man, um, I think my favorite man, of course, I don't know, like, uh, the haunted mask, man, like, you know, especially like just because it was, um, uh, you know, two of them. And, uh, I don't know, like when I think of goosebumps, I, I think of slappy, you know, I do, I yeah. usually typically think of slappy, but it's always been Carly Beth <laughs> that, that I remember yeah. as a kid, even now when people say goosebumps, I'm like, Oh, Carly Beth. You know, um, right. it's just, you know, growing up, man, Goosebumps was such a huge thing for me. And it still is today. I haven't read a Goosebump. Like Charlton's probably read um, some of the, I guess, recent, but I haven't <laughs> read anything like, you know, since probably the early 2000s, you know, and at that time, the, the world kind of changed, the world, the world kind of evolved and, uh, you know, things started happening with like, you know, technology uh, of course, you know, um, Scholastic School Fair uh, continued. Uh, but then there was some other, you know, uh, books, you know, Harry Potter, you know, yeah. and such was getting bigger and bigger in the early 2000s. And, uh, you know, Hardy Boys was just nonstop, uh, you know, 300, you know, volumes of that. And, yeah. But like Goosebumps has just been always something that remained, you know, in us uh, because, it was really my introduction to reading growing up. I mean, seriously, I mean, I don't remember reading anything else. Um, but, I, but I remember, let's see, I'm pretty sure it was Goosebumps. Was there, wasn't there books where you, you had to turn to page seven? Like it yeah. was like a, like a path. Choose your own adventure. Choose your yeah. own adventure. Give yeah. yourself, yeah. Give yourself Goosebumps Give yourself and choose goosebumps. your own adventure. Yeah. So yeah, there was a whole series of, uh, of those, and, I remember uh, reading those. Those, yeah, those were, were crazy. Yeah, I, I you know, I, I always, I looked at those, and I was always thinking that must have been a nightmare for <laughs> the for the author. And I, mm. and I have talked to RL about that, and to him, he says, no, those are a lot easier to do than a regular story. Why that is, I can't tell you. He just wow. claims it is. And I would think it would be 10 times harder. Definitely. I mean, you can you can die in the I, I died so many times in the first chapter. I, died like, I, I just straight up died. Like I, I remember like getting aggravated when I was a kid because I would get to like chapter one dead, chapter two oh dead, chapter three goodness. dead. Like <laughs> <laughs> that brings me back, man. I'm like <laughs> I just turned back to page. All right, let's not do this one again. Let's go the other way. You yeah. know? Going back to what you were saying uh, about them being the first books that you remember reading yeah. the, at the time um, there was no boy market in you know, scholastic didn't have a boy market. Yeah. It didn't exist. All books for that age group were girls and girls only boys were not reading chapter books at all. You know, they may have been doing some side comic book stuff, but uh, chapter books, it just wasn't happening. And when Goosebumps came along, it was the first thing that they started to pick up. And then, you know, RL started to write a little heavier towards you guys once you were picking wow. them up. And, you know, in the 90s, that was very cool to hear from, you know, some, you know, have a parent come up to you and say, listen, you know, my son didn't read anything. Now he's reading, you know, all the Goosebumps and, you know, but I really appreciate what you've done. And that's a nice story to hear. But the story's way cooler now when I hear it from the 35-year-old kid who comes wow. up to me and goes, hey, man, I, you know, I couldn't read. I didn't like reading. And Goosebumps were, you know, what turned me on to horror. And I went on from there. And, I, you know, I read all the time. And I 
burned through all of Stephen King's books. And so the idea, you know, it seems so short-sighted on my part that the idea that, you know, yes, I was doing art for book covers. I never thought of them as helping kids read. I know it sounds so stupid, but it was oh, never anything yeah. that I was thinking about. I was just wow. worried about putting a good product on the book and getting hired for the next job. And uh, so that as a as an unbelievable sidebar, side benefit, side cool thing, <laughs> having, you know, helped kids read is it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, truthfully, then this is. I'm not trying to butter you up, buddy, but you know, had it not been that for that cover, seriously, had it not been for your covers, would I have ever read Goosebumps? I don't know because I just remember going to the school last uh, book fair. I remember all the shelves being there, and the the one thing that always stuck out was, you know, another Goosebumps book. You know, every <laughs> single, and I could just identify by the colors, by the by the design. It was Goosebumps. You know, and uh, and like I said earlier, you were such a pivotal part in, in, in just doing everything. And that's crazy thinking about it now because I don't, you know, that's one thing, you know, the, the whole concept of the show is about the 90s and 2000s, like bringing nostalgia back. And like, and this is how, and this is how we do it. People ask us all the time, like, how do you bring it back? We talk about it. We bring yeah. on people who, yeah. who literally you know, changed our lives and continue changing our lives in so many ways. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so funny because, you know, you were one of my, my earliest memories as a young, young kid, you know, it's, it, you were, you were, you were there with Barney, you know, <laughs> you, you guys were like in that, in that time. <laughs> a little darker than Barney, but I was Oh right yes. There. Oh yes. Not everybody loved each other and uh sang a song in the end, you know. <laughs> well the the uh the going you know the the whole nostalgia and you know and remembering goosebumps. So mm -hmm. I did the books for uh twelve years and then wow. you know Goosebumps did stop for a, a period of time. So it was like, all right, well, you know, Goosebumps came to an end. I need to do something else now. And uh, the digital world started to take off. So I started to pay attention and learn how to do my art digitally. And then, you know, uh, you know, for a while, um, the idea that I had done Goosebumps wasn't it wasn't that cool. You know, it was like, yeah. imagine, you know, going back a few years and, you know, all the hair bands were out there and then all of a sudden grunge came along, you know, <laughs> I was a little too fat and had my uh, spandex <laughs> pants on and nobody thought I was too cool at the time. Oh, and come on. Uh, so I, you know, I had to kind of reinvent what I was doing and um, that was fine. You know, that's, that's all good. That's all healthy. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I was able to, to to change some things around and get uh, a whole bunch of new and different kind of uh, art opened up to me when I started doing digital. But I always kind of looked at, OK, well, that Goosebumps thing, that's that, that was done and we've moved on. And then, you know, uh, 2012, maybe 2013. You know, now I start getting the random email, you know, wow. hey, I grew up, you know, reading Goosebumps and, you know, I still think they're cool. And I just wanted to reach out to you and say, hey, thanks a lot. And, you know, and I would get a couple of those, uh, you know, a couple of year at the beginning. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it just started to pick up this weird momentum. And, you know, now... Wow people are starting to reach out and you know i went from this was just a random thank you to all of a sudden you know i go to comic book conventions now and people come up on a steady pace and wow. bring your books that they still have all these years later and everybody's got a good story and oh yeah um so yeah it went from I was popular to I was nobody to <laughs> now I'm popular again. And uh, it's, 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 it's a lot more fun this time around 
Now sure. that you guys are all grown up and we can right. have a lot more interesting <laughs> conversation than we can I can't imagine the conversations with, you know, 10 year olds and especially, you know, uh, like back then. But um, yeah, well, what it was, it was was always I'm sure every kid was the same. Well, not every kid was the same, but (laughs) they would come with their parents and you could see they were all excited in line. But as soon as they got to the front of the line, they got (laughs) choked up. You know, and and they got yep. scared, and they would, you know, <laughs> fumble through a couple of words, and then that was it. And it was like, okay, oh, well, man. well, yeah, I think funny. now we can say a but couple. Now, yeah, so now couple, I can get a more four part harmony story. Oh yeah, and, uh, <laughs> it's a lot better. It's a that's lot crazy, man. I mean, uh, speaking of comic cons, man, you know, um, what was like one of the the if if you if you can recall, what was like you know, one of the craziest stories you've heard from a fan? Uh, you know, there, I hate to say that they're endless stories, but yeah. everybody's got a story. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of really heartwarming stories where, yeah. you know, it's generally a story where somebody's living a crummy life and they're using goosebumps as a way to escape what's going on in their everyday life. And they, you know, go, you have no idea how much these books help me get through those years and come out the other side. Um, There's one guy who was ill with cancer as a kid. And um, he, he uh, followed the story. um, The, um, What's the, oh man, I don't even know my own stories. Uh, The Blue Mutant, the the, Attack of the Mutant. Attack of the Mutant, thank you. There's people out there yelling at this thing, (laughs) yelling at us right now. Oh, yes. Uh, (laughs) He always, he he told me that he always imagined himself being the the Blue Mutant, and that gave him power to to get better when he was sick. And now he's a grown up and he has the blue mutant tattooed on his back. And uh, yeah, and like, how can you, how can you beat those stories? Yeah. I don't think you can with that one. That's enough. Like that's it. Like that. <laughs> wow. That's, that's some emotionally captivating to hear. Right. Seriously. Goosebumps of all things. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, <laughs> and again, I'm just making, like you said at the beginning, I just, did this thing and I'm making silly actors <laughs> and I'm just trying to, you know, pay my bills and hope that they like me good enough to come back for the next month. And, you know, here are these lifelong in- entanglements, uh, connections uh, that are made. It's very cool. Man. For the, uh, for the fanboying marks that are yelling at you, he meant to say the masked mutant. Mass mutant. Mass mutant. Yes, yes. Uh, we don't know. Yes, look, I know. Yeah. I mean, look, okay. I know. Look, uh, Mr. Tim, we have one final thing for you to do tonight before All you right. leave us. We want you to go down and list every single <laughs> book in order. And if you miss one, yeah, there you go. Right. Well, I already failed. I mean, we, we can skip that right now. I couldn't even get through the first part of it. Charlton, you have any more questions, Jax, uh, Mr. Tim? Um, well, I think the only one I had was, um, I know we had talked about this book and, uh, you had someone else that you were working with that ended up making that one. And then you said that you went from there and did the others, but then we have book number 12, which Mm. you did not do. Um, how did that happen? So like you said, the first one, uh, they were, they were making a choice. Uh, that one that you have in your hands now, be careful what you wish for. Right. I actually went on vacation once. Oh. And uh oh, I, come I, on. that is great. Come on, and, man. And, and, I, and I wasn't there to do the cover. <laughs> and uh so but what was really nice was okay, so the, the we run through the Goosebumps series and this is now maybe 2003, 2004 and uh one of the art directors who was at Scholastic who wasn't there during the Goosebumps heyday Uh, looked at the series and he said, wow, I, you know, we're looking at the series here and you didn't do 
you know, book number two, stay out of the basement and, and book, I think that was a nine or tw whatever number it was, doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> be careful what you wish for. And I said, yeah, yeah. And he goes, well, listen, let's, let's, let's redo those so that you can oh, say you've done yeah. all of the books in the series. So there are alternate versions that were painted by me of both of those covers that came out then. So I can say I did them all and uh, that makes it, <laughs> makes it easier than go, did you do them all? Well, no, I, I missed a couple. <laughs> yeah. I do need to pick those up in my collection. Um, that's the second, uh, editions or whichever yeah yeah that you did yeah that was great i i did see i told this to kayla before uh you came on i did see uh stay out of the basement but it was thrashed too bad so i didn't pick it up so. <laughs> that's that is one thing the 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 the, the original versions that have my cover uh, have my art on there are getting fewer and fewer and farther between and when wow. you find them there, there's some that are very beat up i sign a lot of beat up books that uh, people just they, you know, sorry, this is the one that I grew up with. This is the one? I, like, ah, I get it. I get it. Oh. Well, well, Mr. Tim, uh, before before you leave us, we have two two additional questions we ask all of our uh, guests. And uh, the first question is, uh, what was some of your fondest memories of the nineties? Um. The thing that, you know, as I look back now, and it's mostly from kind of taking a step back was you guys grew up in a very, very cool time. It would have been, a, you know, although when I grew up, it was cool, too. I had <laughs> nothing bad to say about growing up in the 70s. We ran amok and <laughs> they just let us do whatever we wanted. But from uh, a cultural point of view, you guys like the experimentation with cool cartoons and cool media and like people were starting to get on board with it and, and come out with you guys were kind of like the pioneers that, uh, you know, Grin and Stimpy and, uh, oh. you know, the, uh, the cowardly dog and, you know, all, <laughs> all that stuff, you know, the, just the, the, the wild stuff that was out there. And uh, so I think you guys, you know, that was, that was cool and that hardly any of that stuff would you know be cool today so yeah i think yeah. that i think the culture uh was you know and it's you know it was a little bit of it everywhere it was happening in music it was happening in movies yeah. it was happening on tv um it was happening uh, across the board very good answer <laughs> very very good answer um and the second question is um, wh what do you miss most about the nineties? My hair. Ah, <laughs> what, 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 oh, really? Let's talk about that. Uh. <laughs> you can go back and find some, like the, the, there, there's some original, uh, pictures I, and I'm kidding, by the way, <laughs> I, I did wear my hair down to my shoulders when I was Come doing the bumps covers. I had the, I had the whole rock and roll hairdo going. And wow. uh, yeah, at some point it starts to come off. But uh, the day that I decided to shave my head, God, that was so liberating. It's so come easy. On. And, and, you know, like, I'm always ready. Like, you know, it, it, are you ready to go? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. You know, you wake no up, keep nothing. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> That's awesome, nice. man. That's awesome. That was a, that was a good answer. I, I have not heard that one yet on the show. So uh, usually it's uh, you know uh, communication. Uh, you know, um, you know yeah, things I like that. Something romantic, but I'm going with my hair. <laughs> but you were very <laughs> truthful, so we definitely appreciate the truth, uh, Mr. Tim. Where can people find you, man? Um, I, I'm I'm on social media. It's an easy find. Uh, just uh, if you can't. Spell Jacobus, just do original <laughs> Goosebumps Illustrator. It will pop up. Uh, nice. Jacobus Studios is the website. And like I said earlier, you can get prints. Uh, the cool thing about buying prints from my website is $10 from every print sale uh, goes to buying food for the local food bank. And we 
we take care of it ourselves, meaning you give me that 10 bucks, I buy the food, my son and I load it in our truck, we drive it down the street. So it's 100% of that $10 is purchasing food. Man, oh, you get a cool poster and you can pat yourself on the back because you're helping out. Yeah, most definitely, man. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. That's incredible, man. Uh, Charlton, you want to say any uh, last words? Um, it was an honor to meet you. Uh, this was great. I've been reading Goosebump books since I was a kid. Um, I'm still going to watch the TV show. TV Every show's year. better now yeah. than, uh, than when it was in the 90s because you watch it and you go, holy smokes, they had like $14 <laughs> to make an episode. And, uh, yeah. It's a little budget, but I love it. I love it way Me more. Too. I, I do love it. Um, some of the acting's not that great. Some of it is passable. Makes it even better. Oscar worthy. Uh, no, don't go in there. <laughs> you can catch uh, Ryan Gosling and Hayden Christensen That's and it. other great Canadian yeah. actors on Goosebumps. That's right. So uh, and yeah, check Adam out West Goosebumps in the Mass Mutant. Yeah, he was the Galloping Gazelle. Yeah, yes, I did. Go. I did realize that uh, a couple months ago. I, I figured, finally figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I love Goosebumps. Um, like I said, I'm going to be watching that show. I'm just going to be binging it like a madman, like it's I always do, because I just, I'm just i obsessed with it. I have to watch it. You know, um, it left Netflix, but uh, I have the DVDs. They are missing <laughs> five episodes, but I'll have to get them on Vudu, and then I'll have them all. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, well, Mr. Tim, it's been an honor. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Seriously, uh, you know, like I said, you were the beginning of this thing of, you know, nostalgia for us. You know, at the time we didn't know, you know, like I always quote, you know, there's an episode of uh, The Office where Andy Bernard says, I wish we knew we were in the good times before they left. Yeah. Yeah. And that was yeah. like our best, not good, but our best of times was, you know, um, being in school and getting our goosebumps taken away because we couldn't put it down. You know, like I remember that stuff, man. And and then I don't remember it until I start talking about it. Uh, and uh, thanks for coming on and just opening Pandora's box. In, yeah, in every I way for us, you man. guys having me. It's always fun to talk about this. Um, you know, uh, we, we all lived through it and I, lived through it at a different perspective than you did. And like I said, yeah. it's way more fun talking to you guys now than when you were 10. Well, good thing you didn't meet me when I was 10. I was annoying. So uh, <laughs> still I, am. Was I was too. <laughs> well, look, oh, thank you so much, Mr. Tim. Uh, you're absolutely welcome to come back, share some stories, right. uh, you know, hang out with us. We're, uh, we're pretty chill. We're pretty cool. You know, uh, <laughs> very cool. Well, thank you so much, buddy. We, well, this is the Frack and Friends show, guys. Uh, Mr. Tim Jacobus and uh, and Mr. Charlton himself. Uh, I probably should oh, have yeah. said that about Tim, but eh, <laughs> it's okay. But uh, <laughs> this is the Frack and Friends show. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much, guys. The Frack and Friends show is going to start and break oh, I can't stop dancing tonight. Night, night, night. Oh, Frack, here we go again. Talking about the 90s, 2000s for the win. You already know nostalgia is my kin. Now listen up and tune in. We can stop dancing tonight, night, night. Yeah. We can stop dancing tonight, night, night. You already know. The Frack and Friends show. Who? The Frack and Friends show. All right, all right, let's get to the show.